problems stem from the trivialities in conventions. Elusive realities sensed in crisis, ineffable bridled feelings, terrain shifting in dreams. One can't balance unsaddled, flying forward, weight off the stirbs, dragged by a lack of wisdom. In the course of time, in outrider forums, I've met many souls trying to perfect a moral life. Skills rely on instincts. The rush is never smooth or rhythmic. One mistake leads to the grave. It's easier to survive the falling into hyperspace if you're sane. Sky lacks oxygen as the higher you fly, the further you lapse. Ask the woman in the bower who waters light rays of shimmering color. We begin by taking another look at our normal self. Lauren is standing the way she normally does before exercising. We shall enhance her thinking by placing a red X along her body with the midpoint at the tandem. I bet you did not pay much attention to the empty space between her legs. Do so now. Without this space, having a tangible feeling within your actions, you will never know your inner self. Mentally turn the X into an hourglass. This is the primal shape. Take a careful look at the way Coben has set himself to practice the way of the bow. If we superpose one on the other, we see a new Lauren. That is, if she shapes herself around the yellow dots, which are both hinge points and pressure points. Removing Lauren entirely shows her inner being standing on the space between her legs. You already know how to activate this inner being. Come to the set position and let your hands move your body as the women do. When one bows, one compresses the inner being. This is humility. When one shoots a bow, one opens the inner being. Raising the bow to shoot the arrow completed the hourglass image on the physical plane. Closing the distance between the legs collapses the hourglass, throwing one off balance. Without the hourglass mindset, you are your normal self. While your Zen self may look peculiar, it is your natural self before you were compressed by bad habits. <laughs> the, the mind is also subject to bad habits, like ceaselessly talking to itself. We stopped most of the chatter by rolling the belly muscles but the eyes feed the mind with constant images. Few realize how the eyes generate tensions by fixing on things. Tense people stare. To free up the mind, we can use the no fixed point meditation. Take a look at the women in the set position. 
They are not looking at their hands. In fact, using their peripheral vision to its fullest extent, they keep themselves from fixing on any point. Their eyes anticipate the movement of the hands that will bring them into a panoramic view. Once more into the sway of the hands, back and then forward, adjusting the hips. When the women come to rest, the forehead is too high to see the ground and too low to see the sky. Using wraparound vision, they move in harmony, even though they are back to back. Doing the pelvic power shift while looking at your hands will invite your mind to become involved. What should be a fluid motion will turn into an awkward one. To be fluid, one needs to swing into the motions mindlessly. The continuity of motion timed to the rhythm of breathing. As one exhales, the sense's acuity increases. The inhale shuts off the background noise. The exercise for those who ride horses is to be aware of where each hoof is at any given time. Four hooves have no fixed point on a running horse. To shift your weight, pelvis swaying into the motion leaves you in a fluid state. Horse and rider are one. To reinforce the notion of the no fixed point concept, I offer you a painting by Coben Chino Sensi. It is a landscape waterfall. When you look at it, it's hard to put your eyes into the center of it without noticing that while it is a waterfall, it also seems to be a woman. And then you go back to the landscape that seems to be flowing and you don't know where to put your eyes. Unless you take it all in, it does not develop.